name is Rob Edgerly. I'm with Main Life Real Estate Company, brokered by EXP Realty. And I'm, uh, I'm joined today by Tamika Donahue, uh, a good friend and longtime uh, partner of our business. She's with Academy Mortgage. She's a mortgage banker. A loan officer runs a large team of, of loan officers at, for Academy Mortgage. And um, we wanted to <clears throat> bring her on today and have this discussion because um, a question that I'm often asked is how's real estate's doing and real estate is, is uh, directly impacted by uh, mortgage, the mortgage world. So uh, the ability for our buyers to get loans and our sellers need those loans too so they can move on, right? So um, thanks for jumping on, Tamika. I appreciate hey, it. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. How about you? Awesome. Awesome. We're both uh, we're quarantined in our offices. Nobody else is around. And yeah. uh, these are interesting times. Um, so I thought I, I wanted to um, ask you a few questions. And okay. I'm going to go right into to some of those questions now because what people, the number, one of the questions I had for you is what's one of the number one challenges that you're seeing right now um, and that you and, and others are having with um, rates in the mortgage world right now? What's, this, what's the state of the union right now? Well, um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty volatile. Um, I think it's important for people to recognize that um, the biggest challenge is that the changes that are happening are happening so quickly in our environment that um, from one day to the next, um, eligibility could be changing on any given product. And the reason that's important is because um, we're at a point with unemployment, you know, claims last week were 6.6 .6 million. Those numbers are astonishing. Um, and when you see unemployment claims, you see job loss. And when you see job loss, you see hardship. And hardship leads to what am I going to pay, right? Um, in, in our world, what that causes is um, a lot of uncertainty um, because unemployment increases by these astronomical leather, uh, numbers so will default rates. Um, and to avoid further defaults, it, we are forced as banks to follow um, standards of changing requirements. Um, and we're not seeing any uh, changes that are loosening, right? Because the risk is higher. So on a mortgage basis, we're constantly forced to measure risk because we supply financing for the largest purchase someone will make in their lifetime. Um, maybe outside of a business. And the risk is pretty substantial. If you lose your employment, you're gonna take care of your family and your kids first, absolutely, and you're gonna pay your mortgage when you can, um, and other things. It's just the way it happens. So the risk is mm -hmm. enormous. Um, with that being said, in many cases daily, loan programs are tightening. We saw some additional tightening, tightening requirements in the government loans today. So FHA, RD, Rural Development, and uh, VA, those loan requirements have changed substantially in the last few weeks. Um, folks that were eligible even yesterday may not be eligible today. And it's not one entity, it's not one bank, um, it's across the board and it, it's, it's a necessary change. Um, but there's always going to be people impacted, right? So we have to be very cautious of that and try to mitigate those numbers and deal with it as, as, as best we can, as quickly as we can. So um, the biggest challenge is trying to keep up with it. We have a pipeline of buyers that are ready to buy and they might, you know, they might find a house tomorrow. And over the weekend, we wake up Monday and there could be some changes. Um, so it's communication, communication, communication. I, realtors, buyers, bankers, loan officers, we need to be in constant communication with one another to avoid the least amount of um, negative impact to the consumers. Yeah. You know, we've, um, <clears throat> we've always worked with you and your team because we can almost guarantee that things are going to close, right? I mean, we can guarantee it. In many cases where they couldn't close somewhere else, we were able to bring that um, that client over to you and, and, and the deal would get done. I mean, is, is, do you see that that's going to, going to change? I know you have an awesome team, but you have, you're dealing in this environment of, of 
changing, what you're basically talking about is changing environments and it's really yes. changing fast, it's very volatile. So if I say initially that I can approve someone and today they go out and look at a house and on Monday the regulations change um, and they put a house under contract, I might not be able to do that loan. It's the worst feeling in the world. So the, the reason I mention that is because I don't have any control over anything um, with regard to that right now. So if I feel like someone is in a place right now that things could change enough for them not to be ready, what I would tell everybody if it was over a weekend or I couldn't lock them right then is, you know, you have three days to make application, whatever the date is, you know, we're going to hope that nothing changes, but yet, yet at the same time, I think this is unlike any other market, Rob, and we could see some people's eligibility impacted. Not to say that we're not going to close a lot of the loans. I, I don't think that's the case. I just think we have to be super cautious now and um, protect consumers as much as we can. And the biggest piece to this will be immediately locking a loan, right? right. Once one is locked, as a bank, we're not going to not close it. We've committed to it. We were able to secure the lock through our secondary um, department, and we're going to follow it all the way through. So lock as soon as you're under contract. You can lock a loan for up to 60 days. And um, I say take immediate action to protect everyone. Great, good advice. That was actually one of our questions from our team members here too. Okay. Is, you know, what, what are we, um, when should we lock um, loan rates? So, um, and then, so thinking about rates, everybody always, mm -hmm. I'm sure you get asked this all the time, you know, what all the, time. the rate on a loan right now? Um, I, you know, we always tell our clients, well, you know, Talk to Tamika, and it can vary. And yeah. so, can you talk for a, little, a minute about um, what rates are looking like? Because two weeks ago or three weeks ago now, I remember we hit a rates are so low. I had a conversation mm -hmm. with somebody that said, "Oh, we, you wouldn't believe how low they're like three and a half percent or something like that." Talk about that. What? What do you? And what do you think this is going to do over the coming months? So, first of all, rates are amazing, right? They're still amazing. Have you? Um, the fact that you can get a rate in the threes to begin with is just amazing to me. Right. Uh, so in, in our careers, we've seen rates as high as nine, maybe even a little higher. So let's put it in perspective. Rates are still amazing. So some people um, have different overall profile. And I think it's very important to recognize that no two people are alike and their overall credit profile um, is very different from the person sitting next to them. And the program that they're going to be eligible for is different. So when we talk about rates, it's a mistake in my professional opinion to just quote a rate um, because oftentimes people don't know exactly what their credit profile looks like. So to speak to interest rates, rates in the threes, low for some buyers or high for some buyers, they're still amazing. Um, there are some conventional loan programs out there right now that the rates are still in the low threes. There are some housing loans, the FHAs, the VAs, the RDs that you're going to see in the higher threes. And what we are seeing is some buyers needing to pay points. And in a shifting market like we are in, that is relatively normal. Um, you and I have been in markets before where it was almost like it was written into the contract, you know, um, buyers going to pay X amount of points. So this is really just an adjustment period in some ways. And credit score will impact interest rate. Debt to income will impact. So as a market shifts and the risk shifts and risk often increases, which is where we are, there are going to be pricing adjustments. So the bottom line is people should always look at, yes, interest rate, but also overall costs. And is it comfortable and manageable? Because at the end of the day, the rate means nothing if the payment isn't comfortable. So when I'm reviewing things with people, it's always the first question. You know, I ask them what's their max payment. And then when I tell them the payment, they're either like, oh, this is great. Or they're like, oh, that's too much. So we should be counseling based on comfortability and affordability to be sure that people aren't in a position where they're in jeopardy. Okay. And one of the questions from our, um, one of our agents is um, are you seeing appraisals not happening? 
What are you seeing with appraisals right now? With, That's in, a great in, question. So I guess along with that question is, is that maybe causing delays and what kind of delays could we expect? So we receive our overall uh, regulations and requirements from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginny Mae, um, and you know all of the the actual requirements come from up above, right? I'm not making an independent decision myself. You know, Fannie Mae um, sent out letters indicating what they would accept in lieu of a full appraisal. Okay, mm. so if there is a purchase transaction and the seller has had symptoms or the seller just absolutely refuses because of protecting um, their family that they don't want any an appraiser in their house and the buyer is okay with that there have been um, new uh, regulations put in place that Fannie Mae will accept an exterior only and some de in a desktop appraisal in lieu of a complete interior exterior appraisal so they're recognizing that this is impacting everyone. And in my opinion, there have been some very accommodating measures taken to avoid, you know, delays. If a buyer is not comfortable with an exterior only, then we could potentially see um, delays, right? And not all loan programs will work with an exterior only. Um, if you're doing a refinance and you're taking cash out, they, they want the full appraisal on that. Um, and it is extremely important that everybody be on the same page immediately. If you're the listing agent and you know your seller is opposed to having someone in, you know, I recommend having that conversation at the time of offer with um, the buyer agent. You know, this might happen. Is your buyer okay with, you know, not having interior uh, photos and a full appraisal? Um, it is also important that in whatever circumstance, if that's the case, you communicate it back to the lender immediately because as a bank, we are always ordering a full appraisal because that's the best protection for the consumer. Um, however, if it needs to be changed, we're dealing with it and we're acclimating and allowing for um, the, the exterior only. Yeah, I think so. We're living in this fluid market right now. Everything seems to be changing. We're yeah. certainly going to want to jump back in and talk to you again and see how things are changing um, over the next weeks. Um, yeah. In general, do you see any um, major hiccup in the market um, from your point of view? Is this a little bit of a you know pause for a couple for a couple weeks or a month, and and we'll pick back up again as usual? Or what are some of the things that you see in the future? Well, I mean, I think we have to be realistic. This is not a, another week of everyone being at stay at home. It is not another week of businesses being out of business. We're talking at least till the end of April. We're going to see additional people become unemployed. So from a realistic measure, I don't think we are through all of the hurdles. I think we will see some additional tightening. Um, we have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we do business. We need to for commitment letters. I have seen a recent approval from another bank and in there they actually indicated that the closing of the loan was subject to their warehouse funds availability on that given day. And as consumer and as the seller and the buyer and the, the agents, you want to be aware of that. Um, start reviewing approval letters. Uh, have, have your borrowers pass them along. If that's the case, what it ultimately means is if that particular bank on that given day does not have the capacity, they won't fund the loan and nobody will close. So I don't think we're going to see immediate recovery, Rob. I think it's kind of incredible opportunity for people who are ready to buy. There's absolutely no question that we're triple checking things and we're being more diligent and vigilant and um, how we do business, but it's a necessity in a lot of ways to avoid, you know, some, some places will, will not be in business after all of this. Right. So there, there's a need for some additional uh, commitment to doing the right thing at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but still a lot of great programs for people who are ready. And uh, banks are continuing to, do the normal procedure, but in addition to that, verifying employment up until the day of closing is likely gonna happen. Sure. 
you need to be knowing that people are still employed, not only that, still employed in the same capacity. So that means their hours can't have changed. Um, their income has to be the same as the time that they approved the loan to be sure that we're not taking a risk in the end that this the first mortgage payment may not be paid. It doesn't do justice for anyone. Yeah. The um, What's your advice to anybody that's listening to this that is, was thinking about making a move this year, or listing their house and buying something else, or just getting into the market? Um, I imagine some things still remain the same. And um, yep. maybe there's, you know, what should, should somebody back off of that or should they, what should they do? Well, I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of date, great deals come together. I mean, we yeah. work on some over the weekend and uh, happy buyers, happy sellers. I'm finding that um, there's truly um, a, a sense of community. People, sellers and buyers are working together a little differently. And if the deal in the loan can be done and people are happy, you got to move on it. I mean, housing is not something that isn't a necessity, right? So, you know, if you're paying rent somewhere and you're paying a mortgage and you can afford the mortgage, jump on it. It's still, it's still a great time to buy. What is different, however, is that where people may have been a little bit lackadaisical in their communication, it is now the most important time to communicate about everything. Anything we think is a little change. Um, you know, it is a, a loan officer's job to communicate and reach out to buyers, but it is also a buyer's job to reach out and make sure that um, whomever you're working with is up to speed on everything that's happening. Because if we know, we can work through it, right? If we don't, it could end up being um, a huge hiccup. So if you can buy, now is a fantastic time to buy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And I think that, um, you know, no, in no other time has it been more important to really think about who you're working with, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the experience level that you have with your team. Uh, that's why we turn to you. Uh, our team of agents is we're trying to stay on the forefront of what's happening with the market. And it's just no other time where it's been more important to um, really focus on the, the who here right. and also how things are done. And um, how things are done can have no, um, can have a huge impact on our businesses, right? And uh, we appreciate the, the, your thoughts and checking in, say, taking some time out. It's really important. And we've got people out there that are, you know, my takeaway is just really make sure you're working with people that know what they're doing. Correct. Um, same rules apply. Get all the facts, get all the information. Don't hold back if you, if you need to make a move right now. Rates are still incredibly right. low. Uh, there's going to be some changes, and as long as we're aware of those changes and have that vision of that, then we we can we can adapt with our contracts and with our plans. So, I, communicate, I, communicate, communicate. Yeah, good. Yeah. The, the basis of any good relationship. You got but it. We're uh, we're really excited that we're in business with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for really letting fun. us know what's going on. And um, if anybody has any question about uh, mortgages, they can call you. Right, I'll make sure that your your link is here. But uh, okay, awesome. Tamika's with Academy Mortgage. Um, in my opinion, the best mortgage uh, team around. And uh, thanks, Tamika. Thanks for taking care of our clients. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Keep going. We'll keep going. Take care.